Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala al-mawuthi rahmati lil-alamin al-nabiyyina wa habibina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim amma ba'd. Al-yawm sitta min shahri jumada al-thani alfu arbaumia wa ithnan wa arbaun al-muafiq ni tisata ashar min shahri january alfain wa wahid wa ashirin nuwasil darsana fi hafil kitabi al-mubarak رياض الصالحين نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يغفر لي المؤلف ويرحمه ويرفع درجته في عليين ويبارك فيه وفينا الحديث عبد الرحمن وش حديث شيخ حديث أنس أنس بن مالك عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الكافر إذا عمل حسنا. أطعم بها. النووي رحمه الله عز وجل يقول وأنا أنس رضي الله عنه النووي رحمه الله يقول وأنا أنس رضي الله عنه يقول إن الكافر إذا عمل أطعم بها طعمة من الدنيا وأما المؤمن وأما المؤمن فإن الله تعالى يدخر له حسناته في الآخرة ويعقبه رزقا في الدنيا على طاعته أنا سبب مالك رضي الله عنه said a kafir when he does uh, a righteous deed whenever he does something uh, good Sheikh al Kamir al Tafit. Ah, inshallah, we do have. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu said I think somebody has to be there from time to time Anas ibn Malik Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu said Inna al-kafira ida amila hasanatan أطعم بها طعمة من الدنيا وأما المؤمن فإن الله تعالى يدخر له حسناته في الآخرة ويعقبه رزقا في الدنيا على طاعته This hadith is very important which shows us that the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we take in this life are not free they are supposed to be paid and a Muslim has already paid that uh, through his iman the payment is iman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need any material uh, substance so that's why he says in surah to dhariyat wa ma khalaqtu al-jinna wal insa illa liya'budun ma uridu minhum min rizqin wa ma uridu an yut'imun inna Allah huwa al-razzaq dhul quwwati al-mateen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says i have never created jinn or human beings except for the purpose of worship Allah says, Ma uridu minhum min rizq. I don't want any one of them to provide me with rizq. Wa ma uridu minhum an yut'imun. And I don't want any one of them to participate in feeding me. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yut'imu wa la yut'am. Allah yut'imu wa la yut'am. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feeds, but he is not fed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feeds, but he is not fed. He is not fed meaning he doesn't need food at all. So the purpose of worship is to uh, the purpose of creation is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without associating partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muslim have to uh, has to pay for this, kafir has to pay for this. So because of the iman, a Muslim already paid for uh, I'm sorry, not for the for the worship, he has to pay for the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is enjoying, you know, in this life. 
the air you're breathing, the food you're taking, the water you're drinking, you know, the health you're receiving from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of these things are not supposed to be free. A person has to pay for that. And the, the payment is Iman. So for the good ones, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take from them. You know, they don't need to pay for this on the day of judgment. But for the kafir, if he doesn't have any righteous deed, the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa indicated that on the day of judgment, he will be punished for utilizing the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, without making the due price for that. So some of them might be having righteous deed, you know, although they are kufar, but they have some charity, they are giving some support, they are giving others. We do have some uh, 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 who are involved in this, uh, what you call humanitarian, humanitarian aid, you know, supporting humankind according to their uh, ability. But unfortunately, and it doesn't make sense you please somebody, you know, who is not providing you with anything, but at the same time, you don't want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't make sense, you know. You please everyone, but you don't want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, it doesn't make any, any, any sense. I guess uh, this is very, very clear. A person will come and please uh, somebody uh, who is not providing him with anything, but he doesn't please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who provides him with everything in this, in this life. So uh, it, doesn't make, it doesn't make sense, logically. And I'm answering the question that usually being uh, cast to us, how is it uh, uh, possible that we see good kafir, but at the same time, they go to hell when they die without accepting iman. It is very simple, because the one who created them is Allah. And the one who uh, provided them with life and health and food and, and risk and everything is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is the one who's given them all of these things. So it doesn't make sense. They don't give the one, you know, who is giving them. You know, they don't, they don't deal with the one who is giving them everything in a good way. But they went and deal with others in a good way. To get the idea. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he was describing the shirk, he said this is just like a slave, this is just like a slave of a person. You know, when that person uh, appointed him to work in the farm, for instance, you know, he works and he uh, grow the, the plantation. But at the end of the day, the, the after the harvest, he sell it and, and give the money to somebody else, you know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving him, you know, Allah is giving him a lot. But unfortunately, he doesn't give the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him, but he gave somebody else who is not providing him with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing. So that's why there is no justification for shirk at all. So the righteousness of a person, although he is kafir, might serve a little bit, you know, to reduce the size of the punishment on the day of judgment. Because uh, the, 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 the food and the breathing and the air and whatever he is taking, you know, in this life is supposed to be paid. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the payment and the compensation for that, the righteous deed, you know, something good that this kafir is, is doing in this, in this life. Do you get an idea? Or else he will be punished in three ways, you know, punishment for not accepting Allah, punishment for not uh, practicing the rituals of Islam, you know, that's ibadat, and punishment for taking from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without paying the due price for that. So when he does something good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take that as a compensation and, it, and it to that which he utilized in this life without paying the due price. So this is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is referring to. There are some other hadiths which now we did not quote, which uh, might be clearer than this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ الْكَافِرَ إِذَا عَمِلَ حَسَنَةً أُطْئِمَ بِهَا طُعْمَةً فِي الدُّنْيَا a kafir, when he does something good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will feed him in this life and will make it a compensation, you know, <clears throat> for that which he is supposed to be paying on the day of judgment in this life. So you see the kafir, that's, that hasanat he is doing is a payment for what he takes here in this life. You get an idea? But for the mu'min, because he already paid for that by, through his iman. So whatever he does of hasana, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to keep it for him until the day of judgment and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him that. So a kafir when he comes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have no good deed at all. 
Subhanallah. All of his kindness, all of these things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَدِمْنَا إِلَى مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ عَمَلٍ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ هَبَاءً مَنْثُورًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take whatever they did of uh, good deed, you know, and righteousness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it haba'an manthura. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will throw, throw, it, throw it away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good. So for the believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep it for them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him twice. The hasana will not be a payment for whatever he is taking in this life because he, he has already paid for that through his iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep it for him and also for the righteous deed and putting his iman into practice and action, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to keep uh, for him good in this dunya. Allah will grant him good in this dunya and also in the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant him good. So he will receive good in both ways, okay? In, 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 in the two places, the, this, this dunya and also in, in the akhirah. وفي رواية إن الله لا يظلم مؤمنا حسنة يؤطى بها في الدنيا ويجزى بها يؤطى بها في لا يزم يؤطى بها في الدنيا ويجزى بها في الآخرة وأما الكافر فيطعم بحسناته بحسنات ما عمل لله تعالى في الدنيا حتى إذا أفضى إلى الآخرة لم يكن له حسنة يجزى بها. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said as for the kafir uh, 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 he said at first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't oppress anyone it doesn't oppress anyone Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never take any hasana from a believer it doesn't mean he will take from the non-believers no Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not commit oppression at all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't oppress anyone so for the mu'min a mu'min when he does something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُعْطَى بِهَا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَيُجْزَى بِهَا فِي الْأَخِرَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the reward in this dunya and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the reward in the akhirah. So he's getting two rewards. One reward in this dunya and the second reward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving him the reward in, in the hereafter. Alhamdulillah. وَأَمَّا الْكَافِرُ فَيُطْعَمُ بِحَسَنَاتِ مَا عَمِلَ فِي الدُّنْيَا لِلَّهِ So a kafir, whatever he does to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give him the, the, the reward in this dunya, uh, the food, the risk, and everything, because of those hasanat. Hatta ida afwa ila al-akhirah lamma kullahu hasanatun yujza biha. Until the time he goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at that moment, he will not have any righteous deed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him with. He will not have any righteous deed to be rewarded for. So that's how it is. For the mu'min, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him in this life and he will also provide him in, in the hereafter. That's for the mu'min. Allah will give him here and he will give him also in, in the hereafter. As for the non, non-Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take the good deed they have in this dunya to make, uh, to make it as a payment for whatever they take in this, in this life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tawfiq. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tawfiq. قال وعن جابر قال قال رسول الله قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مثل الصلوات الخمس خمس كمثل نهر غمر على باب أحدكم يغتسل منه كل يوم خمس مرات. الله سبحانه uh, the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in this hadith of جابر مثل الصلوات الخمس كمثل نهر نهر uh, جار غمر على باب أحدكم يغتسل منه كل يوم خمس مرات. Uh, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that the example and the likeness of the prayers, the salawat al khams, uh, كمثل كمثل uh, نهر جار غمر على باب أحدكم يغتسل منه كل يوم خمس مرات. He says the example, the likeness of uh, these prayers and how they participate in purifying a person, the person who does them. And you know what the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam said about these prayers, how much they participate in uh, acting as kafara for, for all of, you, for all of you, your sins. So he says, uh, the likeness of these five uh, prayers, kamathali naharin jarin ghamrin. This is just like the 
the uh, sorry I guess this is not the adapter of it the door So he said the likeness of these five daily prayers. كمثل نهر غمر جار غمر على باب أحدكم. It's just like the 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 river. You know, let's say one of you has a river. You know, in uh, in front of his house, uh, and every single day, and this river is a lot. And every single day, you go to that river which is next to your house and swim in it and wash yourself five times in a day. You know, subhanAllah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is how the prayers are purifying and cleaning the person. You know, so uh, they remove the sins in you. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained that. How does that work? Because the moment you you go uh, and make wudu, every single sin you committed with the hand, when you wash your hand, you know, every single sin you committed with the hand will drop down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove it completely. When you rinse your mouth, every sin you committed with the mouth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take it away. The same goes to the nose. The same goes to the face. When you wash your face, every sin that you're committing with your face, with your eyes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take it away. Until the end of your wudu, you know, subhanAllah. Whatever you do with those limbs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove it and throw it away. And then when you go out of your house, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and another beautiful blessing is going to take place. Whereby, whenever you, you make a step, you know, you put your, your foot, you know, to the ground, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove your sins. You know, you bring your foot, you step on the ground, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove your sins. Do you get it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove your sins. And then when you raise uh, it up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will elevate you in ranking. Imagine any subhanallah, uh, your house is a bit far from the masjid, you know, uh, since we're in UI, you know, I give my example in, uh, with UI. Imagine you're coming from Mahalla Salahuddin to the masjid, you know, I take Mahalla Salahuddin like another country, you know. So you're coming from that all the way to the, to the masjid to pray. You know, how many hasanat you get? Every step you have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove your sins. And every step, uh, steps, I mean food you raise up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, elevate you in ranking. Until the time you reach the masjid. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Blessings on top of blessings. You know. And I forgot something also. Right after you finish the wudu, you, you say that uh, the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, Ashhadu la ilaha illallah. وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِكَ لَهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ اللهم اجعلني مِنَ التَّوَابِينَ وَاجْعَلْنِي مِنَ الْمُتَطَهِّرِينَ When you say this dua, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, تُفْتَحُ لَكَ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ الثَّمَانِيَةِ تَنْخُلُهَا مِنْ أَيَّتِهَا تَشَاءُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors of Jannah for you. You get inside through whatever door you want. Subhanallah. Blessings on top of blessings. And then when you move to the masjid, you can see how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is granting you kafara on top of kafara. And when you pray sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, between this prayer that you're doing and the last prayer, the previous one you did, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove all the sins you have committed. Subhanallah. And then after that, when you sit down and make the necessary dhikr, that's why it is very important, even if you are going to make some other dua, you know, it doesn't matter. But start with those the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam advised you to do. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. You know, ayat al kursi and uh, the other the dua, you know, which you already know. And then do the tasbih. Subhanallah, subhanallah, 33 times. Alhamdulillah, 33 times. Uh, Wallahu Akbar, also the same thing. You have one uh, vacancy left. You complete it with la ilaha illallah. And guess what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said concerning this matter. He said, يُغْفَرُ لَكَ ذُنُوبُكَ وَإِن كَانَتْ مِثْلَ زَبَدِ الْبَحْرِ Do you know what does that mean? He says, Allah is going to forgive all of your sins, even if they are like the size of the bubble of the ocean. You know, all the sins you are doing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them, even if the size of these sins are the same as the size of the bubble of the ocean. SubhanAllah. An excellent blessing, you know. An excellent blessing which is priceless, you know. Every sin you have committed, you know, the minor sins, Allah SWT will sweep them out. All of them. So that now you can understand why when you pray, the prayer leaves nothing in you. 
The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's just like you have this, this river next to your house and you're washing yourself every day, five times in a day, five times in a day. In another narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, what do you think? Do you think this person will have any balance of dirt, you know, on his body? It would never happen. Even if you wash yourself once in a day, you know, uh, it takes away all the things, you know. The bad skin will be gone. No, we're not talking about the dirt, you know, uh, and, and the things which are not supposed to be on you. Even the bad skin sometimes will be gone. You know? So that's how prayer is cleaning a person. And as such, my dear brothers and sisters, if there is anything to be negligent with, Wallahi, shouldn't be your religion. Especially when it comes to the Tawheed and Aqeedah. And the second thing is the prayer. Success lies in this prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In the salat tanha al fashai wal munka, wala dikurullahi akbar, wallahi ala matislam. The prayer deprives a person from al fasha al munka. You know, that's a great protection for you. And it protects in this life, and it's going to protect you also in, in the hereafter. It saves in this life. You Allah, it saves in this life. We have a lot of stories whereby people are protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life because of their prayers. And it will also act as a protection for them in the hereafter. So and as such, my dear brothers and sisters, as I said, if there is anything to be negligent, shouldn't be a prayer. And pray them on time and in the masjid also. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, whoever wants to have a clear and a good and excellent meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he should make sure that his prayers are preserved properly. He should make sure that his prayers are preserved properly. He prays on time, sincerely for the sake of Allah, according to the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam with khushur. And he told us about the attitude of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They used to go to the masjid even in the critical situations, whereby a person cannot go by himself, but he will beg people to carry him to the masjid. Subhanallah. To that extent, these people are rushing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through, through the prayers which we turn to be a different as Allah salamu alafiya. So pray calmly with khushu, sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also according to the way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray. So it protects you in this life and it will protect you also be idhn Allahi ta'ala in the hereafter. Instead of having 50,000 years of standing in one position waiting for the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take place on you, to know whether to paradise or to how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it for the praying people. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, just like the duration between Dhuhr and Asr. Listen to this properly, my dear brothers and sisters. The standing for good Muslims who pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on time, on the day of judgment, is going to be, the length of, it, of that standing is going to be just like the duration you have between the, the Dhuhr and Asr. So make a choice right now, you know, some people will wait until 50,000 years and you are just going to stay for two, three hours, you know, you're done. And remember the crossing the Sirat, you know, for the good ones, the people who pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they first have the support from Allah and they have the light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with them and they will cross the Sirat ta'ala if they pray correctly and they observe other manners of Iman, you know, they might be amongst those people who will cross the Sirat just like this, like a blink of an eye. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said like the speed of the lightning. You know, sometimes it's like catching your eyes, you know, you know, so, 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 so light, you know, so light, so light and so quick in the way it comes and goes, you know. Very beautiful creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So imagine the speed, uh, your speed is going to be like that or even stronger on the day of judgment when you're crossing the sirat. So you need it, my dear brothers and sisters. Wallahi, we need it, my dear brothers and sisters. So we get a lot of things, protection in this life, risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the same time, when you go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you receive the best. Good life, right? In this life, you are, you, you are the successful one. And in the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you good. What else we need more than this? In this life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you the success which is based on peace of mind, tranquility, you know, and uh, ease that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in your life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to, uh, what do you call, be with you wherever you are in protection and whatever you need. And in the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you with, with the best. 
وعن ابن عباس قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ما من رجل مسلم يموت فيقوم على جنازته أربعون رجلا لا يشركون بالله شيئا إلا شفعهم الله فيه رأه مسلم عبد الله بن عباس said I heard the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم saying ما من مسلم يموت I heard the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم saying there will be no Muslim that will die فيقوم على جنازته أربعون رجلا لا يشركون بالله شيئا and he has not less than 40 people to pray for his janaza 40 people to pray for his janaza and these people the condition is they are not mushriki they don't do shirk uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's mean they are very dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala especially when it comes to the preservation of the tawheed they are very dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala especially when it comes to the preservation of the tawheed so they don't do shirk if you have 40 people to pray for this person, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, إِلَّا شَفَّعْهُمُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make this, this prayer of these 40 people intercession for this man. SubhanAllah. You can imagine those people who died in, in Makkah, you know, and they have the whole crowd in Kaaba praying for them. Inshallah, at least amongst those one, you have uh, at least uh, 40 who are not committing shirk, be the light ta'ala. So that's why when there is a janaza, the more we can have, uh, the better you know it is for the person. In case we lost uh, 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 one of the, the, these people, you know, among the people who are praying, that is somebody who is making these kind of mistakes, uh, we will top up with the with the other ones. Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa taala grant us uh, good. <laughs> so this is also uh, showing raja, you know, and to bring people closer to Allah subhanahu wa taala. And how do you convince people to come? You know? There is nothing that will make you, you know, uh, that will make people convinced to attain your janaza except your righteousness and it will, uh, uh, um, uh, your righteousness and good deed, your righteousness and good deed. Uh, so the more you stay away from evil and the more righteous you are, the more you participate in supporting and benefiting the community, the more you get. That's why you can see some scholars, subhanAllah, you don't know how, you don't even have a place, you know, to put, to put uh, people who are attending their janaza. We have seen a lot, a lot, a lot of this example. And some of them are not scholars, but they are students of knowledge. And when they die, also you see huge amount of people coming from everywhere. And some of them are not scholars, they are not students of knowledge, but at the same time, they are very good. They are very dedicated in participating in, supporting and bringing good to the community. When they die, also you can see the participation of people to their janaza is very high. That's why one of the righteous uh, people used to look at the innovators and tell them, بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمُ الْجَنَائِسِ you know, between, me, between us and you is the janais, you know. SubhanAllah. That's why you see some of the righteous people, you know, righteous scholars, even after they die, even the people who oppose them, they come and pray for the janazah. And they will tell you that we know that this person is not a man of the dunya. He doesn't look for the dunya, they looking for the akhirah. So do remember this uh, moment. You need people to support you. Do things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will grant you this uh, blessing by himself. Wa ibn Mas'udin qala kunna ma Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi qubbatin nahwa nahwa min arba'in fa qala atardawna an takunu ruba ahli al-janna qulna naam qala atardawna an takunu thulatha ahli al-janna qulna naam qala walladhi nafsu muhammadin biyadihi إني لأرجو أن تكونوا نصف أهل الجنة و و وذلك أن الجنة لا يدخلها إلا نفس مؤمنة وما أنتم في أهل الشرك إلا كالشعرة البيضاء في جلد الثور الأسود أو كالشعرة السوداء في جلد الثور الأحمر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said in this hadith of Abdullah bin Mas'ud متفق عليه Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said uh, there was a time where well, we, are, we were with the Prophet sallallahu uh, alayhi wa sallam Nahum min arba'i he said we are around 40, 40 of us you know, around 40 people with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said atardawna an takunu ruba'ah al-jannah he told them uh, can I share with you a good news they said yes ya Rasulullah he said do you like, would you be happy if I tell you that you're going to be uh, the quarter of the people in Jannah, SubhanAllah. You divide the people in Jannah uh, into four pieces, you know, quarter of them, you know, is the Muslims, the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's really a good news. 
in some narration, the Muslim says, uh, yes, Ya Rasulullah. Say, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you got it. They said, Allahu Akbar, they make takbir, you know. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do you want more? They said, yes. He said, atardona an takunu thuluth ahl jannah. What do you think if you, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is going to make you the third, you know, one third of the people of, of Jannah? They make takbir. They said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, we really want this. Because the more you have uh, people going, to, the possibility for you to get in is, 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 is higher. You know. <laughs> the Prophet said, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is my big hope. And this hope, inshallah, is confirmed that we are going to be half of the people of Jannah. Allah Akbar. He said this happens because nobody will get into paradise except a Muslim. Only Muslim can make it to paradise. It's as simple as this, you know. Nowadays, you know, people are telling you that. How come those uh, kuffar, they're still good, you know. They participate in good and all of these things, but it doesn't work. You know, you are kind to others. Be kind to the one who created you. This is what makes sense. You know, so, so only a Muslim will go to paradise. Non-Muslim, if he dies in shirk, you know, he will never go to paradise. And the Prophet sallallahu said, your example, you know, uh, if you compare, if you look at the, the people, you know, in general, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, human beings, you know, uh, if you look at the, the, the population of the Muslims, in, uh, in, in relation to the population or in comparison to the population of the non-Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِلَّا كَالشَّعْرَةِ الْبَيْضَاءِ It's just like, uh, uh, I mean, the, your size is very insignificant. It's just like a شَعْرَةِ الْبَيْضَاءِ One piece of hair that is white. في جلدي أثور الأسود You have a black uh, cow, you know, you have the black uh, cow. And you have this black cow, you have one hair that is white, you know. That white hair is the Muslims. In subhanAllah, we are very minority, you know. And the black hair, the, all the, 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 the other hair, uh, I mean the hair you know, of the cow, this is representing the, the non-Muslim. You, you can see the size. Up to date also the size of the, the kuffar, you know, is way bigger than the Muslims, you know. We have around 80 billion on earth, you know, and Muslims are 1. Point something billion. You know, we are still the minority. We are still the minority. And when you com 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 combine everything, you know, from the past, from the time of Adam until the time the last person will exist, and you look at the human beings who ever existed, you know, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Muslims will be very, very insignificant, and they will be at the, at the minority. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, if you look at it like that, and also, only Muslim can go to paradise from the previous nation and from the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we will be acting as half of the people in paradise. So that's really a good news. Or you have uh, the, the red cow, but there is one hair that is, that is uh, uh, black. That black hair is, is the Muslim and the rest of the, the cow is, is the representing the size of the animals. But this is not a free ticket, you know, for us to say that yes, the Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa will be going to Jannah more than anybody else, and as such, I do whatever I want. It doesn't, it doesn't go like that, you know. There are qualifications, and there are conditions to be fulfilled, you know, for a person to make it to paradise. Paradise is not free for us just to take it in the way we want. No, there is a price to be paid. Iman and putting the Iman into practice and action is necessary for a person to make it to, to paradise. Sallallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Kulam in Ahli Jannah. Wa Nabi Musa al-Ashari, radiyallahu anhu, qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, idha kana yawm al-qiyama, dafa Allahu ila kulli muslimin, yahudiyan aw nasraniyan, fayqul hadha fi kakuka min al-nar. وفي رواية عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال يجيء يوم القيامة ناس من المسلمين بذنوب أمثال الجبال يغفرها الله لهم. أبو موسى العشري said the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said on the day of judgment when the day of judgment take place 
دفع الله إلى كل مسلم يهودي يهوديا أو نصرانيا. الله سبحانه وتعالى is going to give every Muslim one يهود or one uh, Nasara. You know. Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell the Muslim, this is your ransom from hell. Every Muslim will have another person next to him among the Jew or the Christian, and this is his ransom from hell. Subhanallah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another narration, on the day of judgment, a group of people will come bithnubin amthal al-jibal. Ya gafiruha Allahu lahu. They will come with sins like mountains. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all of them. SubhanAllah. That's how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful to his, to his creation. So when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give, this is supposed to be understood literally. That this is what will happen. But the, the, some of the scholars such as now we said, what is meant by this hadith that every Muslim will be... Uh, uh, a, a Christian or a Jew will be handled to a Muslim and then he will use it as a compensation, you know, as a ransom for, uh, I mean, from, from hell. He said what he meant is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created uh, two places for everyone. Every single human being Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created uh, two places for him. A place in Jannah and a place in paradise. Uh, I'm sorry, and a place in hell. He has a place in Jannah and he has a, pl a place in hell. If he disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the place is already ready. If he obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his place in paradise is ready. So that place which he is going to keep empty is going to be occupied by, uh, by, by the non-Muslim. In hell, because he goes to paradise, is going to be occupied by, by the non-Muslims. So they said it doesn't mean that let, literally it's going to happen. But some scholars said the Prophet sallallahu said Allah will submit him to, to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaf'alu ma yasha. We are his creation and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does whatever, whatever he wants. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does whatever, whatever he wants. So, uh, and now we said ma'anahu ma ja'a fi hadith Abi Huraira and uh, the meaning of this, uh, the meaning of this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qawluhu dafa Allahu ila kulli muslimin yahudiyan he said the meaning of this is supposed to be interpreted through the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that says everyone has a house in Jannah and has a house also in, in, uh, in hell and a believer when he goes to Jannah his place in hell is going to be empty so who is going to inherit this place it will be inherited by those who went to hell Amongst the kuffar. And because the place is empty, so and they are going to be in that place. The whole thing will be given to them. Because he deserved that. He deserves that because of his kuffar. لدخول النار وهذا في كاكوك لأن الله قدر للنار عددا يملأها فإذا دخلها الكفار بذنوبهم وكفرهم صاروا في معنى الفكاك للمسلمين. So he says this will be your ransom. Fikak means a ransom. You're supposed to be in trouble but you pay something to get yourself out of it. So uh, that Yahudi that will be given to this person will be the, the ransom, you know. The one that Muslim will be using as a payment to save himself from hell. But it doesn't mean that he is supposed to be going to hell. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already mentioned that if you're righteous, there is no hell in your case. So when you leave your place in, in, uh, in hell, it is going to be occupied by those who went to hell. That should be the explanation in case somebody asks, because there are questions also going around nowadays that how is it possible that every Muslim is going to be given uh, a kafir, you know, to be acting as a ransom, you know, in, uh, for, for, for hell. So the explanation is like this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted each and every one of uh, I mean, he created uh, two places for each one of us. There is a place in hell and there is a place in paradise. If a person is good, he will be going to paradise. If a person is bad, he will be going to, to hell. And as such, those empty places that belong to the people of righteousness, who did not occupy it now because they went to paradise, will be occupied by whoever found himself in hell amongst the kuffar. 
وعن ابن عمر رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول يدنى المؤمن يوم القيامة من ربه حتى يضع كنفه عليه فيقرره بذنوبه فيقول أتعرف ذنب كذا أتعرف ذنب كذا فيقول ربي أعرف قال فإذا فإني قد سترتها عليك في الدنيا وأنا أغفرها لك اليوم فيوطى صحيفة حسناته سبحان الله This will be the last hadith we study today and it is very very excellent hadith that every Muslim should understand properly you know you know on the day of judgment that is the hisab that is going to be to be made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the purpose of having the day actually for the sake of the hisab so on this day uh, when the hisab is taken you know a person is really going to be in trouble because you know as I always mention We have nowadays the CCTV, we have government supervision, we have human who are doing the physical monitoring, you know, and supervision amongst the humankind, you know, for the sake of uh, the security in the country, you know, in which in some places they can tell you how many, how many times you use this road, you know. So many things about yourself, people will tell you which you yourself you forgot. But the authority have this capacity to detect what are you doing, you know. Where do you go and, and, and things like that. Imagine, this is human capacity. Imagine on the day of judgment, the one who will be reminding you about what you did in this life is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And guess how many things are taking record about your life. If you don't know, let me just shed light on this a bit. You know. How many things are taking record about what you're doing in this life? A lot, a lot, a lot. You have the two angels here. Who did not miss anything? Allah says, "Smile for them in calling illa ladehi rakibun atid." Whatever you say, you know, of a statement, you know, you will never make a statement except that there is rakib and atid next to you, taking the, 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 the taking note on whatever you're doing, anything you're doing, it is captured by these two angels. They will never miss anything. That's why their name is rakib and atid. Rakib means somebody who is doing the muraqaba. Muraqaba means supervision. Always watching you, the watcher, always watching you, 24 hours, you know, always watching you, 24 hours, with no break, you know, there is nothing which will come from you with a disaction or statement except that this angel is watching that, will never miss anything, subhanAllah, you can imagine how accurate is this recording system, and these angels do it, Allah called them kiram and katibin, they don't negotiate with you, they don't even talk to you about whether to write it or not, their job is just to write it. And their name also, Sifa, is Atid. Atid means always there with you. So if somebody tells you that angels don't go to the toilet and you have some people going to the bathroom to commit sins, that's a joke. This person is cheating you. There is no place where these two angels are not going to go. Wherever you go, they go. It's just like a magnet that is connected to you. They take and record. And you have the angels also that Allah SWT, the angel that Allah SWT kept with you, which is the Qareeb, the one that is motivating you to engage in righteous deed. And you have uh, another, what you call, motivating you to engage in righteous deed. And you have, uh, 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 this is also another person who is monitoring whatever you're doing. And you have a group of angels also that Allah SWT created and put with you for the sake of protection. They are also watching whatever you're doing. SubhanAllah, even from the angels, how many angels are watching, you know? And if we take it literally, that there is something that is recording your life, which Allah SWT put on you when He says, You know, every single human being, Allah SWT put something in him which is recording every single thing he is doing in his life. And on the Day of Judgment, Allah SWT will make it as a book and give it to you You read it by yourself. Allah SWT says, Kafa bin Afsikal Yom Alika Hasiba. That one also is there. And don't forget, people are watching. And not people. Allah says, Yom Aidin to Hadith Akbarha. The earth and the place where you're committing the sin also is taking record of whatever you do. Accurately, any place you committed righteous deed in that place, it takes the record of that. Any place you committed a sin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making that place to record that. And to your surprise, 
not only those external factors and entities that are recording what you're doing, your body is recording. SubhanAllah. That's so amazing, you know. And it's so scary at the same time because your body is taking the record. Your eyes is recording what you're seeing. Your ears are recording what, you see, what you're hearing. You know, your hands are recording what you're touching. You know, for those people who will tell you it's okay, you know, just go and do it. Your leg is recording. Your skin is taking record. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالُوا لِي جُلُودِهِمْ لِمَ شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا You know, their skin is going to testify because on the day of judgment, the mouth might lie. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will close it. You know, the person will be told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do you think about all of these, all of these uh, information about you? Do you think you're oppressed? You will say yes. Some will say yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him, no problem. What do you think if we bring somebody from you to, wit to, to witness what you did? You know, to testify, you know, to give the testimony about what you have been doing. The man will say, yes, yeah, Allah, I agree. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will close the mouth and ask his limbs to speak. The hand will talk about what you did. Every single thing you did in secret, they will, they will tell. And the, the eyes is going to talk, the skin is going to talk, the leg is going to talk. SubhanAllah. And brothers and sisters, on top of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. You know, and his watching is very taqiq. On top of all, Allah is watching. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ يَسْأَلُهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ هُوَ فِي الشَّأْنِ There is no way for something to miss Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No way for something to miss Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُلَّ يَوْمٍ هُوَ فِي الشَّأْنِ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of Abu Musa al-Ashari, he said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنَامْ وَلَا يَنْبَقِي لَهُ أَنْ يَنَامْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not sleep and it is inappropriate for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to sleep. Just look at this life. Then go out, sit down and look at the activities that are taking place in your life. Every single second, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching and He controls everything. He controls everything. With no restriction, He's controlling everything. And you can see the taqallubat al-layl wa nahar Nowadays, nowadays day in Malaysia, you might have in some places, you know, in, in places like the U.S. When we just begin the night, they just begin the day. When they just begin the night, they just begin the day. When we take halfway, you know, to the night, some people, they just woke up. In Africa, many places in Africa, you know, seven hours difference or eight hours, you know. The time we, 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 we are almost going to the night, they just... They, I mean, reach halfway, you know, in that day. Imagine who's controlling all of these. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without the support and help of anyone. And you know, he has all the power. So what I want to understand here is, all of these information that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already uh, took about you, on the day of judgment, everything is going to be revealed. He's going to talk to you about that. Is there any way out? Imagine how much you did. Just sit down and contemplate and reflect upon your actions and your life in this life. You know that there's going to be a tragedy on the day of judgment if Allah does not show mercy upon, upon us. <coughs> but the question is, is there any way out? The best way is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The best way is to follow the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that says, Man ahsana fi ma baqi, ghufira lahu ma mada wa ma baqi. You know, don't worry about the past, you know, your past might be useless, you wasted everything, just focus on the present. For the when Yad told somebody, he says, don't worry about the past, focus on the present, fix it properly, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fix the past for you. He says, Ahsin fi ma baqi, yughfaru laka ma qad mada. Be good in that which remains in your life, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the past. SubhanAllah. Very beautiful religion, you know. The past was messy, you know, you destroy everything. All that you have to do is to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely. Allah will forgive the past. And if this is your life and this is your attitude, when you go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Manukish al hisab uzzib. If you are going to be uh, uh, observing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, observe the real hisab on you, you will definitely be punished. Aisha said, Ya Rasulullah, but Allah says for the believers, the hisab is going to be very simple. He says, no, this is only for the good ones. If a person is not good, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to do the hisab and if Allah observed the hisab, the real one on a person, definitely this person is going to be in trouble. Imagine every single thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to talk about, what you did in this life. Just count your activities on a day, you know, one day, just in a day, your activities in a day. In one day, and see how many, how many things you did. A lot. And then you live one year, you live two years, you live 30 years, 40 years, some of us, over 100 years they are living on earth. Imagine every single thing you did in your life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold you responsible and will ask you about it. Why do you do it? Who asked you to do it? Why do you do it in the way you do it? Why didn't you do this and that? You know, subhanAllah, the money you get, where do you get this sent? How do you spend it? And why do you spend it in this space? Details in terms of hisab. That's why they said the hisab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so accurate and the peak. What is the way out? The way out is to fix your attitude in this life so that you will receive what this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu mentioned. The Prophet sallallahu told Aisha that will be with the good ones. And what happened is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring the good ones when he says, What is the hisab and yasira? Is what is this hadith is presented. Yudna al mu'min yawm al qiyamah min rabbihi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring a believer closer to him on the day of judgment. Right, so it says, enjoy this good, subhanAllah, news from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I hope, inshallah, this will be a very strong motivation for all of us to engage in righteous deed and fix ourselves and make tawbah, you know, repent sincerely for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and be good and provide a good to the, to the community. So, on the day of judgment, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will ask the angels to bring you closer to Him. You will be brought closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Qala fayadha'u. Alayhi kanafahu, fayadhaw kanafahu alayhi. Allah SWT will put hijab between you and the creation. So this is a very special, special, special conversation and meeting between you and Allah SWT. Fayuqarriluhu bithnubihi. So that's a secret meeting between you and Allah where Allah SWT would discuss your affairs, you know. And Allah SWT will tell you, my slave, on the day so and so and so and so, you did this, you did that. And the Muslim will say, yes, Ya Allah, SubhanAllah. Imagine this moment, you know. Nobody is between you and Allah. Only you and Allah. فَيَقُولُ أَتَعْرِفُ ذَنْبَ كَذَا Do you know the sin so and so? Do you know the sin so and so? And a believer will say, يَقُولُ رَبِّ أَعْرِفُ He says, Ya Allah, I know that. Allah will remind you about all of these things, you know. You remember every single thing Allah SWT tell you, remember that, yes, we did. But SubhanAllah, look at this. You know, you can have the clue, but this is the day of judgment. You know, whatever clue you have, it will not work until the time you see the conclusion. But having, the, having Allah SWT covering you and not letting people see what is going on between you and Him is a very strong clue that shows that either light or at the end of the day, you will make it. But as I said, the day is too strong, you know. I mean, the, 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 the hardship is so strong. In a way, a person might not be thinking of all of these, you know. That's why in that lengthy hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is part of this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah will keep on talking about your sins and then the believer will cry a lot. He will see that there is no way for him to succeed. And then Allah SWT will tell him, Satartuha alayka fi dunya, you know, Qad satartuha alayka fi dunya, wa in the dunya, I was the one who covered you and concealed your affairs. I did not let anyone see you. You were doing it in secret. And I, I did not let anyone. I did not embarrass you in the dunya. And today I will forgive. But this doesn't mean that a person is committing sin in the way he wants. No, we're talking about a good person. Righteous person who has mistakes. Because there is no way for you to live without having mistakes in this life. So these mistakes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, bring them to you on the day of judgment. Remind you about them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell you, وَأَنَا أَغْفِرُ هَلَكَ الْيَوْمِ فَيِطَّعْ صَحِيفَةَ حَسَنَاتِهِ Allah will tell him, I will forgive them all. Go to paradise. Given his book of righteous deed on the right hand, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take him to paradise. SubhanAllah. That's why I said, my dear brothers and sisters, let's, let's make a choice. Choose this or choose something else. Some people will be having this and some people will be staying in one place for 50,000 years before the, the decision is going to be made about what to happen with them. You know? 
some people within that 50,000 years, they will be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in relation to the person who is not giving the zakah, he said for 50,000 years he will be punished on the day of judgment and then ثُمَّ يُرَى سَبِيلُهُ إِمَّا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ وَإِمَّا إِلَى النَّارِ And then he will be shown his position and his path either to paradise or to hell. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, salam wa ta'afiyah. So as I said, my dear brothers and sisters, there is no time to waste. Don't look at the past. Focus on the present. This is what you have right now. And you don't know about the future, whether you will reach it or not. Fix your present. Make sure that your presence is always good. Your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always uh, good. It's always excellent. And whenever you do something wrong, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The doors well, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are not closed. They are always open. Unless if you close them by yourself. But they are always open. No matter how much you went too far, you can always come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will welcome you back. So that's all for today, inshallah. Uh, next week, be the light Allah will come on and, uh, and continue from where we stop. Barakallahu fikum. Subhanakallahu ma bihamdika. Shalallahu ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.